Welcome back. We are loving Africa Day already. Happy Africa Day if we haven't said it to you already. The significance of this day lies in its recognition of Africa's history, solidarity through struggles and cultural heritage. And we know there is a lot of darkness and there is a lot of light, but it serves as a platform to reflect upon the progress made by African nations as well as the aspirations for unity and development. It's not a nice to have anymore, it's a must have. We have to find our own way now. And that's a great vision for any continent to have. And Mandy Sanger, the head of education from the incredible District 6 Museum now joins us very early to discuss the significance of this day. I'm taking one for the team this morning. Thank you so much. We, we love you. We love what you do. We love what you represent. You are a custodian of such a vitally important story or narrative. Mm. We have these opportunities like in Africa Day to shine a spotlight, to connect, to have this amplified voice. That being said, what does this mean to you? How do you wake up feeling on Africa Day? I feel very proud and it's, it's uh, unfortunately it's a very recent uh, feeling for us in South Africa mm. where they've experienced uh, years of being isolated from South Africa, unfortunately. But um, at the District 6 Museum, we see ourselves as an African museum first and foremost, you know, through representing South African stories and the idea that um, particularly now Africa is beginning to emerge and all its beauty including its challenges, yeah. you know, that when, so when, we, when I wake up, I don't wake up with the idea that everything's perfect, but I love the idea that um, uh, people begin to see a person who looks like myself as African. Yeah, no, completely. I mean, we come with a lot of baggage. I mean, this country, the whole world at the moment is, we're trying to process our baggage and maybe COVID gave us a little too much time looking in the mirror. Um, we seem to have moved into a real time space, solidarity. I think we forget that our story isn't our story alone, certainly from the period of the struggle and how many African nations were affected by that journey. What does solidarity look like now? Does it need to be politically motivated? Does it need to be cultural, economic? How do you wrap your head around the notion of solidarity in 2023? I think you touch on a very important point that the idea of solidarity doesn't just have to be political. I think we've always thought about it in that way. We've always thought about the idea that Africa will unite if our governments unite. If the leaders can just the, get it right. Get it together yeah. and, and see eye to eye. Um, but I really think um, through all our challenges and struggles um, and also with citizenship journalism, and this is where the pandemic came mm. in, where we were able to see the diversity in Africa. <laughs> and so we see that the best way to solidarity is through people to people connection, and that's through music, through art, through sharing stories. So someone like Chimananda Aditya Ngozi, the famous African writer, um, has noted that, that it's about time we, we stopped seeing Africa as a single country, but celebrated our diversity and used that as a basis for unity. So, for instance, the kind of Guma music yeah. that we look into, it's an African music. It's, it's emerged in the soil of Africa. And it's by the time we started sharing with other musicians from other parts of oh, Africa. Oh, completely, because it speaks to a financial ecosystem as much as an emotional or cultural one. And exactly. I, I absolutely get that. I'm just looking at you, there's so much I want to ask you, but maybe I can, I can ask you as an educator mm. to put that hat on right now. If mm. I'm in a position to be able to educate today, whether I'm at a school, whether I have an opportunity to go on a tour, whether I'm just wanting to sit down and contextualize this for mm. my kids, how do I do that? What is the opportunity and what lesson do you think we need to reinforce, obviously based on your learnings through your very, very particular window? Mm. I think, first of all, uh, you know, um, kids in school love the idea of proverbs, of, you know, wisdoms, and there, there, there's so much wisdom and, and proverbs in Africa, the idea of it takes a village to raise yeah. a child. That's Africa, that's an African proverb. People like to call them memes now, but memes, we'll, call them, exactly. we'll call them, it's wisdom. That's and so, and, and I think the idea of memes and, and celebrating the very many parts of, of, of Africa, but having, uh, you know, cultural sharing days, which is not in the old anthropology way. Yeah. In which, you know, you, 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 you presented cultures as separate and fixed. Yeah. But I think um, teachers, particularly in schools, need to help young South Africans, South Africans to reimagine themselves, to reimagine themselves as part of the African continent. We see a lot of South Africans in schools imagining themselves only in terms of 
the USA through well, music. It's all they can see. Exactly. It's so teachers have a big role to play, yeah. to expose, to play African music in classrooms, to have African days that's not just on the 25th of May, which is important, but throughout the, the year. And to think about teaching about other African countries. South Africans particularly don't really know about other African countries. They don't know about African leaders. They don't know about Julius Nyerere, who saw oh, education yeah. as very important. Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Patrice Lumumba, people who were amazing in terms of pan-Africanism and understanding the diversity of Africa. That Africa includes countries like Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt, which is often not spoken about. You know, we see Africa as Uganda or Kenya only. Yeah. We've got to check our baggage at the door. We've got to plug into minds like yours that have taken the time and have been purpose-driven mm -mm. in their pursuit of the truth within the story. So I'm going to say thank you once again for about the hundredth time for doing mm -hmm. what you do absolutely every day. I have a feeling that Africa Day this year is going to be different to any other, and it's going to be celebrated in real time. What are those challenges? What are those solutions? In fact, hyphenate those two words together because that's the African way. Mandy, thank you so much for you and the amazing team at the District 6 Museum for telling the story, lest we forget.